Hello everyone, Sean here once more, looking to bring you another word of uplift in this continuing season of lockdown, by trusting in the Lord to both bless and enrich you with all the help, comfort and encouragement that he knows we all daily need if we're going to be pressing on in his good purposes and plans for us. Now, I don't know if, like me, you've noticed that a lot of people at the moment who are stuck inside are posting out on social media images of days gone by, when life, it appears, by comparison, seems so much simpler and safer. And of course, they then go on to nominate others to do exactly the same thing. Uh, and maybe you've been asked, I don't know, to jump on this nostalgic merry-go-round in one way or another, posting pictures of your family as they've grown up or album covers of musical artists that you uh, bought and enjoyed or uh, old-fashioned sweets that you love to uh, eat back in the days of your youth. I don't know, but I do know that looking back, can bring a longing to return to days less complicated than they might now appear to be. Days, for instance, when decisions were made simply by going rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> Do you remember those days? Days when it was unbelievable to us that hide and seek was not an Olympic event. Days when the biggest concern to do with money was over who would be the banker in a game of Monopoly. Days when race issue meant nothing more than seeing who could run the fastest. And days when a whole evening's entertainment was had by giving Grandad a toffee apple to eat with his badly fitting false teeth. <laughs> Those were the days, my friend. And though contrary to what the song went on to say, they did end. A good job too, when you think about it, because whilst looking back can be fun and a reminder perhaps of better times, no one can live life to the full simply by hankering for the past. Life moves on. And if, like the Apostle Paul, our ambition is as his was, and he describes it for us in Philippians 3.12, to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus had taken hold of him, then, as Paul goes on to say, there's one thing to do. There's only one focus to have. There's only one path to take to bring it about. Forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on, says Paul, towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenwards in Christ Jesus. And you know, part of getting ready for what God plans for us in the future is only revealed to us in the letting go of those things from the past that Jesus died and rose to release us from. Those habits, those hurts, those slights, that pain, those problems, the misunderstandings, the grudges and the resentments. For the more we keep reliving them and replaying them, the more we remain the victim of circumstance and the less we live in the victory of Christ. Now, folks, this is not to downplay or excuse the bad that we may have been hit with or the sins that we may have held ourselves back by. It is simply to underline that in Jesus we don't have to carry our yesterdays into tomorrow. We're a child of God now, with a past that is forgiven and a future that is secure. So our focus should be more and more on pursuing what Jesus would have us to be and not what our past, for all of its good moments or for all of its giant failures, might restrict us from becoming. No one can change the past. God can forgive it <laughs> and God can use it. But when we're so focused on it, we enslave ourselves to regret for our failure and to pride for our successes. 
And the good old days can become damaging days if the memory of what has been ever starts to overtake the hope of what yet is still to come. This is why Paul tells us forgetting what is behind, straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal. Paul was determined that no matter what the past had been for him, and certainly it wasn't all good, far from being good, the rest of his days were going to be the best of his days and his past would not be allowed to limit him. Now it's not that our past doesn't matter, of course not. There are precious memories we all treasure, but dwelling on all our yesterdays can end up costing us what all our tomorrows are designed by God to deliver to us. Forgetting our yesterdays is not about ignoring them or missing the lessons that are learnt from them. It is simply being willing to move past them to make room for what God wants to build into our future. No one can go back and change the history of the world. No one can take the anger out of someone who feels the past has let them down or they've let themselves down in the past. And no one ought to minimise the pain caused by it either. But we can and we should be pressing on in Christ Jesus as Paul was to maximise the message of the gospel that whatever our past, whatever our past, whatever we've done, God in his grace is here to gift us a future. Amen. At some point, we're all going to look back on this time of lockdown and reflect upon it. But unless we move on from it and not just go back to how life was before it, then we may well end up missing the fruit for the future God would bring to us out of it. When the missionary David Livingstone returned from Africa to England, he was asked by a journalist where are you ready to go next? And Livingston replied, I'm ready to go anywhere provided it's forward. <laughs> ready to go anywhere provided it's forward. And I trust that that might be our goal and our ambition too. Ready to go anywhere in the Lord and for the Lord as long as it's forward. Glad for what's been, but more hopeful for what is yet still to come. Do you have that sense of excitement as you move forward? Or are you more taken up with what once was? Maybe you know that deep in your heart, you're restless for something more. That no sooner do you think you found the key to success, and then you discover that someone goes and changes the lock. That life, even in lockdown, though full, is just not fulfilling. Then please, I encourage you not just to look back to what Jesus died to forgive you for. Thank God for that. But to look on too, to all that Jesus rose to continually and everlastingly satisfy you with. As Paul said it, forgetting what is behind straining towards what is ahead, pressing on towards the goal. Confident that in Jesus, as the old gospel song said, I ain't what I ought to be, and I ain't what I used to be, but praise God, I ain't what I'm going to be, which I know is terrible English and awful grammar. But it's wonderful theology <laughs> and it's a great thought for us to embrace at this time in our lives. God has so much more for us that we must never limit him to what has been. When even eternity cannot exhaust all he still has in store to bless us with. I know these are not easy days for many of us, but my hope and my prayer is that you will all stay safe and continue to be encouraged, not by turning back to how things used to be, but by pressing on to how they will one day be in Jesus. 
So stay focused on him. Keep pressing on. Keep on keeping on. And I promise you, the presence of the Lord with you and the power of the Lord for you will allow you to live in God's purposes and plans that are there to enrich you. God bless you and see you again soon.